Uh, hello! Today I'm taking this awesome Hurricane Evo down to Porsche Centre Swindon where I'm ordering my Cayenne Turbo GT. Well, I've already ordered my Cayenne Turbo GT but I'm going to go spec it and um, yeah, put my um, stuff in order, get all the papers signed and everything. So that should be quite exciting. But today isn't about the Turbo GT. Today is about this Hurricane Evo. So what you guys probably don't know, because I have never put it on YouTube before, but those that follow me on TikTok should know that I own a Lamborghini Aventador SVJ, which is not this car here. This car is a Lamborghini Hurricane Evo that I got as a courtesy car. So I had some issues with my SVJ where a cable touched another cable, blew a fuse, and then it has to be replaced, but the cable's coming from really far away and is located in a really weird place in the car. So that repair job's taken ages. So I was given this car to drive around for the time being, and I thought, you know what? For my return to YouTube, what better than talking about a car that's not mine? So the Hurricane Evo is the second generation of the Hurricane, it shares the platform with the R8 and also shares an engine with the V10 R8. The, this one in front of me develops the same amount of horsepower as the Lamborghini Hurricane Performante as all the engine modifications they made to make that car faster were put in here. Uh, yeah, it feels as fast as the Performante. I had a Performante about a year ago now and it was amazing. There's a video on my YouTube of when I collected it but it feels the exact same in terms of acceleration and in terms of uh, top speed. Not that I've gotten top speed. <laughs> uh, differences over the Performante are you don't have the ALA um, active aerodynamic system on the front and rear, so this is a fixed aerodynamic system on this car. You've got um, aerodynamic parts and fins underneath the car directing downforce around, and I believe in total this makes 30 kg more than the original Hurricane, but not as much as the Hurricane Performante. You also get this mini wing that I'm not really a fan of. I mean, I think it would have been cool if it like popped up, but dude, anyway, I'm not a designer, but let me know what you think about the wing on this car. I don't think it's good enough. The interior of the car, if I open up for you, sorry, it's really dirty, is green and black with the comfort seats. One thing I must say is if you're getting a Hurricane, definitely get the comfort seats. My Hurricane Performante had bucket seats and I hated it. I mean, I love driving the car. It had a lot of grip, but it was difficult to do long journeys and it was difficult to convince my wife to let us go in the hurricane anywhere because she hated it too. Um, so yeah, definitely get the comfort seats. They started doing something called sport seats, which are an in-between between comfort and bucket seats. And I think that if you really want to be gripped in your seat, but at the same time you want to drive the car often, that might be a good halfway point. I've only driven on them once for about 30 minutes, so I can't give you my opinion on them, but they did feel okay. Upgrades over the original uh, Hurricane and the Hurricane Performante in this model, however, is that it now features a four-wheel steering system that allows the car to turn the wheels in opposite directions at slow speed and turn them in the same direction at high speed. What this resorts to is a uh, shorter turning circle and a virtually shorter uh, wheelbase for the car. I've been driving this around, I've been loving it. Um, one thing I've noticed is that it's like a daily car, you could drive this every day. It's, pretty much quite reminiscent of a 911. So yeah, it's an amazing car. I'm taking it down to Swindon now. I'm gonna talk about it on the way with you. Uh, I'm literally just doing off the cuff. Like I was saying before, I'm just trying to make this as natural as possible. I'm not trying to make YouTube videos that are too review -y because people have tons of reviews. And one thing I've realized from doing this on TikTok is that a lot of people want to know what it's like to like just do normal stuff with the car. Like, how is it actually living with the car? So I'm gonna run you through that. Hopefully, I keep you interested, but uh, let's go. I've got my 360 camera as well for the interior view. I haven't got my setup all mastered yet, but I'm gonna try my best for you guys. So as you can see, I'm in standstill traffic. So the exciting part of the Lamborghini, I won't be able to explain to you. However, I will take this opportunity to explain why I'm not really that bothered that I'm in traffic. So basically everyone knows Lamborghinis are rowdy, uh, raw, thrilling, exciting, extravagant looking, but the Hurricane Evo, I can definitely say, is a more subdued Lamborghini, and that has its pros and its cons. So the pro I would say is that you could drive this every day. Just like now, I'm in traffic and I'm chill. Compared to driving in my Aventador SVJ, driving in traffic is so much more relaxing. In the SVJ in the, and in all Aventadors, you're supposed to put in neutral every time the car comes to a halt in order to save the clutch and then re-engage gear when you want to move. So it becomes quite tedious. Whereas in this, you can literally just press this M button here put the car in auto and just drive along, no hassle and no problem. Also, the cabin is a very nice place to be, as you can see. I have more than enough room. I have headroom. However, as someone who's six foot, I have a very short torso, so, um, and stupidly long legs, so it works for me. However, if you have a longer torso, your head will probably hit the roof. So, um, I would say definitely if you're interested in a Hurricane, try and sit in one before you purchase it. 
Um, other than that, the interior, again, is a wonderful place. The new uh, infotainment system really, really brings out uh, the luxurious feel of the car. It also means that now you don't have that small screen like I had on my uh, Performante before here that was just for oil pressure and oil temperature and battery level. I can now do things like CarPlay on here and still be able to see my uh, instruments. I can press the LDVI button. So if I click here and press LDVI, you can see what's going on with the car. So you can see the torque split and you can see what the four wheel steering is doing at all times. Real quick as I'm driving and it's um, wonderfully green F-Type is next to me. There's a symbol here, I'm not sure if you can see it, obviously I can't see the angle because I'm driving, trying to be sensible, but the car does have cylinder deactivation. So this car actually has been given really good miles to gallon. I've averaged about 21, 22, and on one trip when I drove down to Lamborghini, I got 30 miles a gallon. So again, cylinder activation, what it does is it shuts down half of the bank of cylinders. So in this V10, the car will then cruise on five cylinders as long as you don't request too much power from it or do anything crazy with the steering wheel. And it'll just chuck you along. And when you're doing that, it does give a really, really good mile power gallon readout. It's just planted all the time. It feels really, really nice to drive. It feels really compliant and it feels really young though. Like I was saying <laughs> before I really interrupted myself, it feels really compliant and really fun to drive. This is a more usable car and it's a more friendly car to drive. It doesn't make you feel like you're going to die every time you go around the corner and it doesn't do anything stupid and it doesn't scare you. I mean, the Performante was a more rear biased car when I would drive it. It would shift a lot of weight, to, um, a lot of power to the back, sorry. Whereas this car keeps it quite 50-50 and balanced when you're going quite hard. I think a little launch control is on the cart here. Oh, wait. I should probably slow down. This engine is a monster. It's a great sounding 5.2 litre naturally aspirated V10. As you can see, I'm pumped. My energy's up. Downshift sounds so sweet. I do love the V12 sound, but in the V10, it just sounds more rowdy, especially when you're really going for it. Do I need fuel? That is the question. I've got to do 53 miles and I have 48 miles of fuel. I think I do need fuel. Speaking of fuel, enormously large tank in this car. Off the top of my head, I believe it's an 80 litre. I'm not sure if that's accurate, but it just can take everything. When I fill it up, I get around 400 miles of range. When I... Oh, the petrol station closed, what's going on? Yeah, so when I drive again, about 22 miles to the gallon, loads of range, so it is a great car to daily and tour in because you don't run out of fuel that much because the tank's really big and it's quite fuel efficient. But yeah, let me get some fuel and then I'll jump back in. I've ordered my um, Cayenne Turbo GT, inspected and everything. Uh, looking at a few cars here. I don't think I'm going to buy another car for the rest of this year. Um, yeah, the Lambo is really good though. I really enjoy driving it. I'm going to talk about the Turbo GT more in another video. But. So, just finished up at Porsche. It's just in the background. We just ordered a few cars. I got the Cayenne Turbo GT. It's just got his 911 on the way. Well, potentially he's getting a 911 and he's got his Taycan. It's a nice car to see. But yeah, so the Evo drove it up here today. Like I was saying in the car, it's amazing. You can actually use it as a daily and I've enjoyed driving it so much. Um, oh, look, it's sucking up leaves. Um, those exposed um, radiators really are annoying. 
You have on your Performante, do you have? I haven't got the grill card. Grills, so, so you'll just get battered, battered with stone and then you have to change the radiators, change don't the radiators, you? Radiators, yeah. yeah so one so, annoying thing about it. Yeah, yeah. So Ish has Ish has a Performante in the same color, Grigio Lynx. Grigio Lynx, yeah. And he has radiator guards covering um, the radiator. Oh no, he wants to get radiator guards covering the radiator. And I think that is something that you have to think about if you're getting this car. One thing you should also get if you're getting a Performante, especially if you're going to be daily driving it, like I've said you should, is PPF. So if you see this little seam here, this car has front end PPF, which is a film layer on top that protects from stone chips and damage and whatnot. And it also keeps the paint looking fresh all the time. Oh, and it's got it on the back as well, just not on the top half. V10 engine, this engine is very, very amazing. It's a new generation Lamborghini engine. And I say new generation because the V12s are the older one and they've just been updated. Whereas this engine um, was developed solely for this car in the R8. Uh, as you can see, it's off center. That's because they've done all the driveline stuff here and the gearbox bits so it can send power to the front because this is a four wheel drive model. Uh, yeah, I love this car. I don't know what else to say about it. I just keep talking on about it. I love it. Negatives about the uh, Evo, I would say the negatives. Mm, that's actually quite a hard one. Yeah, no wing. That's a good shout. The Evo doesn't have a satisfactory wing. This is not good enough, Lamborghini. We need more wing. And if you're going to put this, at least make it move. Do you know what I mean? It needs a wing. I think the four wheel steering is great at low speeds but it makes the car really skittish at high speeds. I don't really like it, especially compared to my Performante. I think also the front end, I know I said it looks better, but I think it is still too busy just in this section here compared to the Performante. It is a gorgeous car, but now that I look at it now, it, it does look a bit busy at the front. And obviously the little Lamborghini niggly bits, the infotainment system is not very good and um, the interior space isn't great either like i said if you have a long torso I, i'm lucky i'm tall with a short torso so my head doesn't touch the roof but if you have a long torso your head would definitely touch the roof uh the seat in position is good aside from this always touches my knee again because i have long legs um not much storage space cup holders are one thousand pound extra <laughs> um and yeah i mean like it's not there's there's not many negatives with this car it's just Comfort seats. It has comfort seats. I would always recommend get a Lamborghini with comfort seats. Even if you are going to track it, just get the comfort seats. Trust me, you don't want the hassle. Let me open the front. So you press a little button down here, the front hood opens. I'll show you some of the storage space. So you press the little latch there. Got, got some Zara shoes in there, but just in case. So you've got a decent sized space for a carry on luggage, but I wouldn't expect to ever use it to its capacity um uh, ferraris tend to have more space my aventador does have more space as well but this is just okay there's nowhere to store anything in the car so just bear that in mind if you do want to daily this supercar like you can you're not going to be able to carry more than two three shopping bags three shopping bags uh, three shopping bags yeah but i don't know there's, i haven't got many negatives oh no wonder it keeps telling me there's no window washer there's no pressure <laughs> there we go uh yeah honestly i've just been waffling like i said i don't want to do reviews i just want to like talk about stuff normally and actually evo sick if you want a supercar one day and you want to drive it every day it's definitely a really really good shout i know it's just a gorgeous car yeah gonna start my oh, i'm getting blinded gonna start my drive back again this video was very impromptu so i don't expect you to Love it, but please don't hate it. <laughs> I'll try and keep more videos and I'll talk about my collection and what I've got going on. Really looking forward to my Cayenne GT coming. I didn't film the specking of that because I'll just film that when I'm at home. I'll be a bit more comfortable doing it there. Got my 911 Carrera 4 GTS coming, which is going to be really cool. And then... Taycan GTS. Taycan GTS, I forgot. I got I've got three Porsches on order, Jesus Christ. And it has two. Although it's probably going to end up being three or four as well. And then we were looking at one car in there. Oh, you won't be able to see it. GT3 RS. And we were thinking about going halves on it as a track car. Um, yeah, but yeah, stay tuned. The sun's coming down. Should be a beautiful drive. I have the windows down and everything. But yeah, thanks for joining me on this YouTube video. And uh, yeah, have a nice day.